in our lives, the proverbial exodus is inevitable. Birds leave home in migratory cycles. Beasts cross vast landscapes to new frontiers. Humans succumb to wanderlust, our primal nature to see beyond our known horizons. Diaspora might render us strangers to our own native land, but somehow home has always had this power to summon us back, like a mother, into her cradling arms. Here in the northwestern valley of the majestic Cordilleras, the gongs are sounded, signaling the return of the mountain's sons and daughters. All dreams, all praises, all roads lead back to the land of their ancestors, Abra. Pilgrims riding the modern homebound caravan have never had it so good. Paved highways make traveling relatively breezier, and the province is reached after an eight-hour ride from Manila. Centuries ago, the only way to penetrate the crags surrounding the valley was through the silent yet imposing river, crisscrossing the rugged landscape. The river opened up the rocky mountains to nomads and intruders alike and with this all-important role, it was named the Abra River, a derivative of the Spanish word abrir, which means to open. The river, in turn, lent its identity to the land that bows to its powerful presence. Spanish missionaries then found their way into the valley and built churches and brick houses in what is now Banguet, the province's capital town, all the while Christianizing the already established inhabitants, who were the Ilocanos and the indigenous Ipnegs, or Tinguians. Relations between the Spaniards and the locals grew tighter. Intermarriage became a common occurrence. One distinguished descendant of these interracial unions was Gabriela Silang. Popular knowledge paints her as a resident of Vigan in the Ilocos. Gabriela was the Ilocana heroine perpetually associated with Diego Silang, her husband of vegan origin, who led a revolt against the Spanish administration. Unknown to many, Gabriela was the daughter of a Spaniard and a Tingyan woman. After the death of her husband, Gabriela took charge of the rebels and led them to replenish their stocks and skills in the homeland of her mother. The mountains of Abra were Gabriela's sanctuary until the time she and her forces decided to come down and stage an attack in Ilocos, which ultimately led to her capture and execution at the gallows. Today, Gabriela Silang's monument welcomes Abra's homecoming children, who did well in opting to pass through the province's more convenient gateway, a tunnel piercing through the mountainside. Like Gabriela before them, these uprooted abreños, as Abra's people are called, are undertaking the journey back to their ancestral homeland, where those who chose to stay put await them with serene anticipation. Welcome home is the reverberating shout, and with reuniting embraces, the province begins to breathe in the scent of a brewing celebration. Abra's son is quick to retire behind mountains enclosing the valley. Yet even in the fading afternoon sunlight, people are still up and about. A different picture from the common day Abra basking placidly in the hum of rural life. For these are no ordinary times. Preparations are on for the coming day's pageantry in joyous commemoration of the founding of the province. Banged is the ceremonial venue of the festivities. Youngsters and toddlers play and while their time away at the town plaza, smiling at the thought of the coming fiesta, 
and the idea of staying outdoors past dinner time. At the Capitol building just across the plaza grounds, Abra's young performing artists rehearse for the last time before the regal day of reckoning. From one side of the atrium, a woman calls the shots, Veda Banyas Alonso, who was once artistic director of the Manila Metropolitan Theater, is supervising the performer's last rehearsal. These kids are auditioned from different uh, places in Banged and nearby municipalities. And uh, they have been training in voice and dances and theater also. Veda is an Abreña with Ilocano ancestry. Yet, she is but one member of a homecoming flock, paying homage to the land of her blood relations. My parents were born and uh, raised in Abra. My mom and my dad left for Manila, and we grew up there until uh, we came back a few years ago, about the, the 90s, that's when I came back to Abra. And then I helped with the cultural presentations and the fiestas of Abra. We are entertaining a lot of visitors from all over the world, umbrenos from all over the world, who come home every fiesta. It's traditional for them to come home every fiesta, so we are trying to put up entertainment numbers and um, Ilocano songs and dances for nostalgia purposes. While Veda busies herself fixing the performer's blocking, her best friend is stationed nearby, watching the rehearsals. Christina Chong, fondly known as Gang, is not even from Abra, but she considers this blessed valley her second home. I'm a very good friend of Veda. I come from San Francisco, California, and I'm here as her guest. And Veda and I came up yesterday, but this is not my first time to be in Abra. I've been here several times before. We, we rest, we relax here because you have beautiful mountains and scenery and your vegetables and your fruits. Ay, nako. <laughs> we veg. The mountains have undoubtedly endowed the people well. All across Abra's landscape grows a host of important crops that give the people sustenance and livelihood. Sugarcane, corn, tobacco, bamboo, achuete, mangoes. Every town boasts of its own specialty product, and this is one significant concept at the forefront of the upcoming festival. On a well-lighted street west of the Capitol building, several high school students are deeply immersed in their own exercise. This is their final practice for the Inter-Municipality Street Dance Competition. These students are representing the capital town. They are fresh out of their performance two weeks before for Banged's own fiesta, the Dap Il Festival, where sugarcane, the town's main product, was in focus. Their costumes, coming as no surprise, are stylized renditions of the sugar cane. We have been rehearsing for almost two weeks now. The rehearsals are so tough for the kids. We have to do the rehearsals every night until 10 o'clock in the evening, especially that we had so many affairs before this, so we had to do overtime. The children don't seem to mind, for they are enthusiastically bent on bringing honor to their hometown and so are the other young abreños.